Alright, people, poetry happening. Let's get some water. Yeah, so it's going to be daunting. Let me make sure I have all my judges in line. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, New calibration code, a new sacrificial code to it. Lindsay. It's what has kept me from having a healthy home. You could say I've been a dirty motherfucker. And like I said, I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. I was in a hole and didn't know it. I was in the dark and didn't see it. There is something wrong here, and it's not my fault. Not completely. Um, I also know that you can only blame your upbringing for so long until that card gets worn and weathered. Have you ever let yourself go? Have you ever let anything go? It's really freeing. It feels good. Something you were grasping, clinging, clutching, something you didn't even know you were touching. You've been grinding your teeth and wonder why they ask you why you look so angry. I'm not angry. I'm not an angry person. But I'm sure the red takes you off just the same as everybody else. And as much as I wish I could figure out how I got here, as much as I beg myself to come up with a reasonable answer, now is not the time to think. Now is the time to act. And I don't mean theater. I'm talking about executing a plan. Get over such aversions, man. Keep it cool, even cold. While well, I've been wintering since 2007, I dreamed I went to heaven, and I called God a fucker. <laughs> <laughs> and still to this day, I'm not sure what happened. I just put salt on the wound and washed it pucker. Like a great big pile of stuff. Was I looking for a reason not to exist? Suicide has always been tempting. Until I lost someone that way. In a place I was meant to finally learn what it meant to live, I died. Specifically, I specifically said, no deaths while I'm gone. And I guess the devil himself got two doves with one great big ass stone. Why don't we learn our lessons? Use the shortcomings of others to inspire you to work on your own. It is by taking away that which is not gold to find it. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Live your fucking life. Live it. The funny thing is, when you find yourself against the wall for so long, not only do you not bloom, you will dig your roots between two mistakes so concrete and hope the, evil, and hope the weed killer gets you. Use it or lose it. So I'm going to remember the next time Big D wants to taunt me with hurting the thing I love the most, I am going to shoo him away like the fly he is. I, I'm not a piece of shit. I'm not worthless, and I'm not a waste of space. But I would be if my apartment defined me. So in honor of my love, my, in honor of my love for family, friends, and strangers, for all of my brothers and sisters, I am going to let go of everything that brings me down. Let go, of not, let go of what is not serving you to make room for what does. It's time to wake up. It's time to live life to the fullest. After all, there's finally room to do so. <laughs> Set that gauge for the 
second round. Um, I'm, I've been going through, like today, I told, I've been tearing my house apart with, in this, with this, this intent to get rid of like most of my possessions. It's so hard. everything <laughs> I put in the to-go box, I'm like, um, I just have to have like a garage that like ASAP. <coughs> okay, judges, let's see. 7.2, 6.0, 7.2, 6.0, 7.2, 6.0, 7.2, 6.0, 7.2, 6.0, 7.2, 6.0, 7.2, 6.0, 7.2, 6.0, 7.2, 6.0, 7.2, 6.
and our conversations were like dances. It was a pleasure to partner with you and Waltz or erupt with laughter when it turned cha-cha. Your sense of rhythm found its home, not only in the way you carried your physical frame, but also in the way you carefully selected words before crafting sentences. By way of tearful regret, I'll say only that I wish I'd spent more time soaking up the wisdom of your life. Your handbag carried keys that unlocked the secret to more smiles and also turned over the engines of sports cars. Perhaps it was the same key. Truth is, evidence suggests those smiles were born of something more that when the corners of your mouth turned up, we were actually watching a love story unfold between mother and son. Your remarkable century saw the highs and lows of the world's bedrock emotion, but this, in the sunset of your life, as lavender and magenta flooded your eternal sky, you experienced the steady truth of ceaseless love and a firstborn saw his father through a set of reverent eyes. It seemed your joy, that your joy, that never-ending spirit of connection, found its essence in the one thing that every soul craves involuntarily, unconditional love. Once you had it and owned it, you gave it away and drew an entire family tree toward the matriarchal root. We howled at your quick wit, marveled at your regimen of fitness, sat dumbfounded as you bluffed a flush and savored every stuffed cabbage created with humble hands and pushed out far more than they ever pulled in. There was an artistry to even your basic movements. The way you placed your knife and fork at meals end, the way you held a hand of cards, your muted entrance and departure from a room, never seeking to draw undue attention. You didn't need to. You knew you were loved. I often waited eagerly for your exit so that I could praise the precision of your presence without pushing you to blush. You were a woman of remarkable honor, Grammy. I counted a blessing that once, as your days wound down, we let salt water fall between us. To feel that moisture against my thumb and cheek was a chance to bear hug a moment in time. To embrace you as a hundred years of history joined us in the room, and then it was a chance for us to laugh. For me to admire the grace with which you aged and to run my fingers through your hair for the first and only time. See, in that moment, Grammy, you gave me permission to love you. You trusted me with a momentary fracture of the composure on which you stood so firm. And do you know that you never looked so beautiful as you did then? Wow. stitches shield me when he barged in tardy and drunk her sticky buns stale his cooling meat congealing on our cheap kitchen table she snatched the full carafe of burgundy aimed it at the whore's perfume and hurled it but he ducked too soon to be sliced by glass or sanctified by wine that stained the wall and splashed the doors that slammed behind him i bolted for the shore my tide was out out there a reef Teeming, expanded its canopy, and me, I was rocked to sleep peacefully until he tripped over me. It seemed easy how he stripped my secrets. The neighbor boy found me, rocked me. The neighbor boy we all called nobody, but I'd been shipwrecked, and I was in pieces. Nobody joined the Navy, marched on board a nuclear submarine. Inside was attractive male energy, Dancing heavy metal passageways, caressing the pole, the beam, his cot's woven wiring. He called the siren of the steel hull, who moved in. She became his cool skin. She was in the fussy way he scraped spuds in the galley, 
how he chastises roommates for seeking escorts on shore leave. He once snapped at me, grow up. I walked the spine of my ship, slipped to her fin, tested the wind, and dived in. I mastered the waves. One night she went all the way, all the way out to the edge of her reseated tide. Plucked stones and shards of shell forced smooth. That shattered girl remade herself better, less, not more jaded, more, not less innocent. I know the difference. I spread my comfort quilt on carefree sand and waited for you to land, no buddy. Remember you, a boy. Remember joy before she gripped your heart with steel. Remember when you could feel. Well, here it comes again. This time, I promise, you'll feel the slap of impact, the panic rising in your lungs, the tender friction of our skin as we surrender and plunge in. flesh and a baby is born from the wound of a womb. The mother is screaming, bleeding and dying. The baby is crying, but as their eyes meet, they both start smiling. And this was you, this was me. Anybody, everybody whose parents wrote poems in our DNA that we live each day. We can edit these genetics, still give credit to this play directed by the stars on Spaceship Earth. Time travelers unraveling and grappling with who we are. So what's your story? From your first tooth to your first day of school to your first kiss this is your experience, so how do you want to live when your free will asks your fate to dance? Will you take a chance? Will you rest in reason or play in passion? If a gift is a curse, then nobody has it better and nobody has it worse. Mm -hmm. Simply the choices that we make are the paths we create as we walk to our grave. Days become years and those kids from your class will take different paths. That person you first kissed is now an acquaintance with their own kids. You catch a bone. How y'all live, some be working for tips and some own the business, some don't even have a job, some praying to God, some playing with the devil, some stay up all night, some fight for their rights, some are dreamers, some never wake up, some go roam across the globe, some still live in their childhood home, but everyone you know one day will die. Season after season, watching the gardens grow green in the spring. As your hair grows, watered by the winter, until you find yourself an old wise one. And you're so, so tired, and you're sharing and staring at a fire with a wild child. 
so inspired. It's yesterday's memories are tomorrow's dreams. Yo, yesterday's memories are tomorrow's dream. So this moment right here, right now, you better own it like an omen of atonement. This moment right here, right now, you better own it like an omen of atonement.
like categorizing awkwardness in a way <laughs> yeah. that has never been done before. Yeah. Yeah. Does, it, does it seem like that? Yeah. Like awkwardness is this kind of the cool thing. <laughs> it's, kind of like, it's a feature of our cultural landscape that I don't, I don't know, did they have were people awkward in the 50s? <laughs> <laughs>